Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you're checking out a Mix Essentials slash Production Essentials tip and trick tutorial video. And we're gonna be covering three ways you can make your, or make sure that your mixes seem louder. So this is something that is a very confusing topic for a lot of people, and I think it's something that actually gets overthought in my, in my opinion. If you go Google right now, tips and tricks on how to make your mixes louder, you're going to find the common ideas of uh, compression, saturation, limiting, that sort of stuff, and maybe expansion. Uh, you'll find a lot of people tout certain plugins like FabFilter. Uh, they'll say, I, I set up Ozone Maximizer, the maximizers from Waves, that sort of stuff. And that's all very true, and it does work. But for me personally, I struggled with this all the time all the time when I was younger. I always felt like my mixes just were super quiet. And it got to a point where I realized I just wasn't really good at setting up like a real mastering chain on my two bus, or my stereo bus. And that's what you see right here. And so now I use really subtle quote unquote mastering chains on my two bus. And I do that just to kind of understand how my mix is gonna sound once it hits the world of limiting. But by no means do I release any track without having it properly mastered. But this also lets me A, B my tracks with commercial re commercially released tracks. And it's in the ballpark, at least. It's it's similar. It's in the outfield together, I guess, if we're using a sports metaphor. But I was going to show you three tips and tricks that I use and three ways that I ensure my mixes are a little bit louder. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is a difference in metering. And this one's kind of more, uh, it's for me, a lot of it, I always focused on the peak. I was like, no, my kick's not loud enough, and but I can't turn it up too, mu too much louder because it's going to peak, it's going to clip. It's going to go above zero decibels, it's going to go above unity, and then I'm clipping. Well, I don't really care about clipping anymore because clipping is like a really, really easy fix. You just turn something down, right? Or even throw on some compression. But easiest way is you just turn. If your kick or something that's really transient rich is clipping, you just turn it down. So right now I'm talking and I'm peaking around negative five, negative six decibels. And you can see that right here on this meter. See the peak meter right there. Well, the one you care about more or that you should care about is the RMS and even the LUFS. And I could do a whole video on those two metering types because they are more of an accurate portrayal of how our ears are perceiving loudness because the ears get tricked. That's really all compression is. That's really all... An, an, an enveloper does or a transient shaper, what it's going to do is it's going to trick you into thinking something's louder. So for instance, throwing on like a transient shaper effect on a sound that you want to seem louder, right having it hit that, the transient shape, having it hit right at the attack, the initial stage of the sound, makes the ear think that the whole sound is loud. It's why we use explosions and white noise hits and cymbals and crashes when drops happen and that's why film trailers do that like they'll lull you with a silence and then you know and you're like whoa i better be watching this so like that that's a really common sound design trick and th so those are the things that with that more i guess accurately portray what a peak is and you want rms values to be a little bit higher you want to focus by your rms files so right now if this was a mix right i'm peaking at negative two decibels so you're like okay i only have two decibels of headroom Let's send that out to mastering because if you Google an article on like how to prepare your track for mastering, it says give you give it three to six decibels of a headroom. Well, you're at that range right now, right? But your RMS values, like let's say this was a mix, is negative 18.4 and that's just downright shitty. It's just too quiet. It's not going to ever be competitive. I won't even touch on the LUFS yet, but if you have a mix with your peak at negative two and your RMS is at negative 18, negative 15, negative 12, and you're peaking near zero, it means your your mix is too heavily swayed towards things that are transient heavy, like kicks and snares, potentially plucks. So you need to be more aware and cognizant of your RMS values, not your peak, because peak's not a problem, you just turn it down. So I have a mix that I did of just a really simple mix, because it's easier to show you guys this with less tracks, but that's the first thing I'll do. So step one is be aware of your RMS values. It stands for root mean squared. It's more of like a mean or an average of the overall volume of sound. Now that's more important because that's more kind of uh, that's more important than a peak level because it's more of an accurate portrayal of how we're going to hear. So I have uh, four 
instruments technically. I have this these two synth chords which are panned out left and right, a lead, a bass, and then my drum group. Now the drum group I put on all, all in one group just for this video because it'd be easier to show you this stuff so I'm not scrolling up and down. But I would like to, if I was doing a full mix on this little demo here, I would stem everything out and get the mix. I could squeeze a little bit more life out of it, a little bit more volume. But what we're going to do first is we're going to compare these tracks here that this track here that I did with a chain smokers don't let me down track. So here is chain smokers don't let me down. And we're going to pay attention to the RMS values as we do this. All right, that seems better. Set negative 5.5 on the RMS. Now let's listen to the one that I did here of this demo with the instruments up here. I bounced it out with a little mastering, quote unquote, mastering chain. But let's listen to that real quick. Alright, so it's at it was at about a, if the peak RMS was about just a shade under negative nine, it was on negative eight. So obviously chain smokers is gonna be louder. But it's not noticeably a lot louder. And that's actually more a function of the LUFS meters, which I want to get into. These are my favorite types of meters to try to figure out what's going on with my mix. And the LUFS of these two tracks are fairly similar. So mine's about negative 6.7, negative 6.5. Theirs is right there as well. So theirs is a, is a commercially release, most likely professionally mastered track. So it should be louder than my pseudo master. But I wanted to just show you that because I'm admittedly, I'm not very good at the whole mastering two bus chain thing. And if I can get it to sound like that, like if I AB this in my car, for instance, just checking the overall volume, I, would be, I wouldn't be like, whoa, my mix is so much more quiet than that track. So let's look at, so that's the first thing, the metering. Don't worry about peak, focus more on RMS. And if you have an LUF, LUFS meter, do that. Now, a good RMS value to be between for a lot of EDM uh, pop, hip hop genres is anywhere between negative four, negative four and a half to negative like six, seven. And that's of like a, that's once it's mastered. If you have a mix without a mastering chain on it and you're at about negative 10, you're doing good. So I wanna show you that right now. So. Here is that same mix, but without these plugins on my master bus. So my LUFS was around negative 11 and the RMS probably around negative 12. So if you're in that range without having any mastering plugins on like compression or limiting on your two bus, once you get it set up to mastering, it will be loud. But if you're down in that like negative 18 range on those, negative 20, it's not going to be, it's going to be hard to get it to have that commercial punch because it's just not enough. Like you kind of got to preheat the oven before you put the, the track in to master it, if you will. Now, let's look at the next thing that I want to talk about and that is the use of buses or auxes. And aux sends for me are a huge part of making my mix louder. Here is that same mix without any aux on. So I bounced this out right here. This is with the master, right? I have the master effects on. I just don't have the aux on. <laughs> And then here's the aux with aux on. So it's a huge difference in overall perceived volume. And doing aux sends, doing buses, parallel processing, parallel compression, 
those are things that will come up in every list of how to make things louder, but you'll typically just hear about parallel compression. Well, I do a lot of parallel processing to make things louder. So here are the synth chords. Okay, so now I'm going to do, I have the aux sends off. Let me unmute those and let's listen to those synth chords with them on. So it's a huge difference. So let's play, let's play the bass, the drums, and the lead. And I'm going to turn off the aux sends. So I'm peeking around an A of 16 RMS. Now let's turn on those aux sends. All right, so I'm about nay of 13.4, nay of 14. So it's adding a lot of perceived volume, or a good amount of perceived volume to my mix. And now that adds up in the course of a mix. Think if this was a deeper mix. This is a really small mix, so it's easier to show you. That's essentially just having parallel processing on two tracks. I don't really have any on the drums. So when we add that in with the chords, so let's play the bass, the lead, and the chords, and let's look at how much the processing the aux sends, the parallel processing, is affecting the sound. So let's play it with it. And off. So it's at negative 17, negative 16. It was at negative 13, negative 12 for the RMS values for left and right channel. So those are adding a lot of... Uh, just value in terms of volume to my mix. Now, if we look at the peak with both of these. I do have some peaking occurring. So all I, all I need to do there is let's just turn down the send here a little bit, or the volume of the send, essentially of this track, on the aux send. So it's not that, like I said, it's not that hard, and it seems to be my right channel, which means it's probably this synth right here. So it's not as hard to, to tame, it's, it's a lot easier to tame uh, anything that's peaking. So now it's not going to peak. Still have that right channel peaking. Let's see if it's this. All right, so let's play these chords together now. All right, so it's not peaking anymore. And if we turn off the aux sends one more time. There's a difference. Now, if you're wondering what plugins I'm using, don't worry, I'm going to tell you. Um, the, the plugins on the aux sends are on the track. So on the synth chords, we have... One of them is being bussed out to a compressor, doing some kind of parallel compression uh, ratio. It's pretty pretty light compression. And then I have another bus going out to Fab Filter Saturn, which is doing some saturation, and then a little bit of sausage fattening as well. I'm using that as like a verb, which is kind of fun, I guess. Anyway. <laughs> And then we have uh, we have an enveloper adding to the tail of the sound because there's a lot of holes in this specific track. Like I play a chord, then there's a hole. So that's what's going on with the two buses. Then on the uh, or the four, the actually the three buses. And then on the main lead here, we have a same thing. We have it being sent to the aux one, the bus one with the fab filter satter and the sausage fatter. Then we have I have it out going out left and right though for that, so it's not in center. So that's actually a huge element to this lead being bigger. And then I have of course some parallel compression and an enveloper or a transient shaper again. Now the bass I have uh, the bus just doing some parallel compression, and I have the uh, CLA seventy six compressor on the actual track. But again, that's that's more of the aux sending 
the, the bus sending it out to an aux track as it is, as opposed to what I have on the track. You'll notice I don't really have anything on these lead tracks here. Uh, it's just some LFO tool doing some sidechain style compression effect, as well as the channel equalizer. Now, that's the third thing I want to talk about, and I'm saving that for last because it is really important, and I'm a little bit longer than I wanted to go in the video, but so let's finish this up. So to recap, first thing, don't get stuck up on the peak values. You can always turn those down. Do get hung up on your RMS and your LUFS values. You want those to be around negative 10, negative 12 before you send out to mastering because a good mastering engineer will be able to get that up to around negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and your track will be commercially loud. Then next thing you want to be aware of is don't just throw on effects, saturation, compression, all that stuff on your actual track. Send it out to an aux, send it out to a bus because then you can add volume to your mix and you can do it in a way that's more subtle. You have, you have, you're basically adding a little bit more headroom to your overall mix and I like using that. So I do that all the time and that's why I kept this track small so I could show you the difference it makes with four, just three or four tracks. Imagine if this was 15 tracks deep even it would make a huge difference. Now, the third thing is equalization. And this was the aha moment for me years back when I was like, why aren't my mixes loud? We're all taught, or you'll, you'll probably all hear at some point if you haven't already, that you need to cut the low frequencies out of anything that's not a bass and cut the high frequencies out of anything that's not a lead or a mid instrument. And yes, that's true. But the reason you do that isn't just so your track fits together frequency wise it also makes getting more gain and volume out of your tracks a lot freaking easier so for instance to show you that i'm going to solo let me turn off the buses on all three of these tracks real quick and i'm going to uh, show you just how much of a gain difference you can have on a track that you don't clean up the frequencies so let's take this eq off here and i'm going to pull up a new equalizer on both of these tracks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out all the high frequencies and leave like from like 150-ish down, right? And that's just, that's like where you would actually properly cut this. And you can see I did that here on the actual track. Well, let's take that EQ off and we're gonna do that again. And we're gonna just listen to the buildup of frequencies that are essentially making it harder to mix the low end of your track. And in a genre like EDM, that's really important because your bass and your kick are obviously living there. And if you're struggling to find space, you're going to have to turn up your, your kick louder than you want to. And then you're going to be clipping. And then you're going to be like, well, you can't get your RMS values up because you're already peaking. So let's solo these. Now, it may not seem like it's very loud right now, but what it, imagine if you had two, even two or three more layers of these types of sounds. Like it's very common to layer leads and layer chords. Potentially, you could be having almost a third of your mix being taken up by just frequencies that you don't even need in those tracks. So I can't stress how important that is because, again, with a genre like EDM where your kick's really important, your low end's usually really important, or hip hop pop even. If your high-end instruments are taking up all that space, you're going to have to turn up the low-end instruments in your mix louder than you want to, or louder than you need to, because of frequency masking. Our ears are really bad at discerning different instruments in a mix when there's a lot of frequency crossover, and that's why we do EQ cuts and boosts. And if you, the only way the ear can discern which one it is, is it's actually like trying to hone in on is, is usually the loudest one. So if you have a bass, you have a layered bass with mid bass, it's going to hone in on the lowest one. And if your leads are kind of fighting with that by not cutting out those frequencies, you're going to have to turn those up louder than you want. And then you're always struggling to get a good balance. So again, I cannot stress how important it is to properly cut your EQs before you do anything on the sounds because you should be able to get a good ebb and flow of the mix just doing a static mix which i did a video on and just doing some basic eq cuts and then you can do things like the aux sends or the buses depending on what your daw likes to call them to add to the rms values of your track by doing things like saturation and compression as well as even maybe a little bit of limiting now last thing i want to talk about is the little master bus here that i use it's really basic i have a ch um, and it changes from genre to genre i have a api emulation I think I'm only, I'm not really adding anything with this. It doesn't do much, just adding a little bit, of probably sonic character. I do use a sausage fattener. 
Uh, I put it anywhere from 5 to 8 to 9%, depending on the genre. I think I had this one at 8 so it's not doing a whole lot. Then I set up Ozone in this instance is just doing some stereo widening, nothing crazy. And then the fab filter limiter is kind of what's keeping me from clipping. And I'm only applying about a decibel to a decibel and a half of gain usually. And I make sure my output's set to negative 0.1 or negative 0.2 so I don't have clipping in other genres. And again, I'm always going to send out to a, a mastering house, but this just lets me hear the mix with some limiting on it. And it usually gets pretty loud. It's it's definitely commercially viable. An example of that was when we checked out this track that's in this green right here against the Chainsmokers track. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below. I hope this video was helpful. And I think if you follow these different kind of guidelines or tips and tricks, you should be able to squeeze more perceived volume out of your mixes. So like I said, leave comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Echo Sowers. I'll see you guys next time.